It's time to freak out. I would like to sing Freak the Freak Out. Are you sure? It's a pretty intense tune. I'd like to sing it now, please. But let's be honest, I freak out about once a week, so this is nothing new. <laughs> Hi guys, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Katie and in today's video, I am giving myself the permission to freak out. In all honesty, I probably freak out at least once a week, so this is nothing new. However, for this video, it's actually okay to be freaking out. I am doing the mid-year book freak out tag. I'm pretty sure that's what it's called. Mid-year freak out book tag, something like that. But I did this last year and I will have that linked somewhere for you guys. But this is just a roundup of, you know, some of the books I've read the first half of the year, some of my favorites, disappointments, things like that. I'll have all the questions listed down below for you guys if you would like to do this as well. And I would love to know your answers in the comments down below. But let's just get in to the mid-year book freak out tag. Mid-year freak out book tag, whatever. Okay, so as of right now, it is June 17th. And I have read a total of 28 books, which, okay, for some of you guys are like, I've read like double that. Good for you, good for you. But to read 28 books, have a full-time job, you know what, I'm doing good. I'm doing good, I'm four books ahead of like my Goodreads goal, so I'm good for me, okay? So, the first question on this tag is, the best book you've read so far in 2022? Now. I have read, like I said, 28 books. I mean, it wasn't difficult for me, but like I had to think, I'm like, hmm. Cause looking at my Goodreads, a lot of the books I've read this year have been romance. I, I, I'm not turning into a romance channel by any means, but the majority of books that I have been reading, at least since like the beginning of March, have been romances. So if you had subscribed when I was reading a bunch of thrillers, I am so sorry. Um, but the book that I chose for this was The Confidence of Wildflowers by Michaela Smeltzer. Okay, look, some people did not like this book. Some people did. I loved everything about this book, even the twist. Well, it wasn't really a twist, but I can't tell you what it was because it's a spoiler. But I, even the ending, there you go. I even loved the ending of this book. It is a age gap romance. Uh, this girl named Salem has a neighbor move in named Thayer and he is I think he's 30, 30, 31, 32, somewhere around there. She just graduated high school and they have a romance. I love this book. I loved it. Read it. I mean, the cover is beautiful, like beautiful. So if anything, read it because of the cover. But I think I've said this a lot in, <laughs> on my channel since I've read this book, but it's definitely one of the best books that I've read this far. The next question is the best sequel that I've read so far in 2022. I've only read one because I don't consider like sequels in series that are technically can be standalone. So like Stolen Air from Sophie Lark is technically a sequel, but it's also a standalone. Uh, the Mistake by L. Kennedy, technically the second book in the series, but it's not a sequel because it's not following the same main characters. So I don't consider those sequels. So what I did choose as the best sequel was the Resurrection of Wildflowers by Michaela Smeltzer. I, look, so many people did not like this book. They didn't like it. They didn't like the way that it was like the story went, the, the overall arc of the story. I loved it. We know! Exactly, it's exactly what I needed and I didn't know that I needed. So I can't go too much into detail about this book because it is the sequel, but it just know that it does follow the same characters as the first book and there is like a six year, six or seven year time jump from the first to second book. But I absolutely loved this book. Again, and the cover is beautiful. The covers of these books are fantastic. The next question is a new release that you haven't read yet, but you want to. And to be completely honest, I haven't, I don't keep up with like new releases that much because I've been reading a lot of indie books and it's just harder to kind of keep up with when books are coming out and things like that but there is one that's not a romance actually it's a thriller 
and it's Daisy Darker by Alice Feeney. I had read Rock, Paper, Scissors at the beginning of the year and I absolutely loved that book. I thought it was great. I thought the twist was good, you know, so for that. But she does have a new book coming out. I'm pretty sure it's in August and it's based on like a secluded island type thing and the family gets together and everyone starts dying off one by one so it's like who's killing everybody but i have heard people who have read the arc and they seem to love it so i have very high hopes i have high high hopes honey you've got a big storm coming i totally just messed that up daisy darker is my most anticipated release for the year for the rest of the year. A release that I haven't read yet, but want to read is June 1st by Jennifer Hartman. I don't even know how I did that. Okay, so backtrack. The My most anticipated release for the rest of the year is Daisy Darker, but the new release that I haven't read yet, but I want to is June 1st, which is a taboo, slow burn, step, it's not even a stepbrother. Cause like, they're not even related. Their parents, they have no same parents at all. He gets adopted into this girl's family when she's basically born, the day she's born. And it's a very, very slow burn. So if you don't like it slow burns, just don't waste your time. But it's their, you know, their relationship. That is the new release that I still need to read. And then Daisy Darker is the most anticipated. And then my biggest disappointment of 2022 so far has been Don't do it. Don't do it, girl. Don't. Seven husbands of Evelyn Hugo. Don't come for me. Don't hate me. But look, I just didn't. I, ah, I gave it a four star. But and you're like, this doesn't make any sense. I know it doesn't. Welcome to my world. It's who I am. But the writing was a four star. That's it. I just, I didn't get the hype. I'm sorry. I, it is what it is. Like, I. I don't maybe if it was a movie I'd, I'd maybe like it but this I it's just eh. and I don't have much to talk about with it because one everyone's read it two I just don't have anything to say about it okay my biggest surprise for 2022 was actually Brutal Prince by Sophie Lark because there was so much hype around it that I was kind of like there's no way it's going to be as good as everyone's saying it is but I was pleasantly surprised because it is. I have become like a Sophie Lark stan. I have read the first two in the series now. I need to continue. I'm such a freaking mood reader that I just, even though it's on my TBR, I never get to it. So I will get to it when I'm in the mood, but I will finish it because they're easy reads. They're not heavy into like, they are mafia, but they're not like heavy mafia. And the spice scenes are fan freaking tastic. So yeah, my biggest, most biggest surprise would definitely be that book. The next one is a new favorite author, either new to me or a debut author. And I have two. Uh, the first one is Michaela Smeltzer and it's either Michaela or Macalia, and I don't know how to pronounce her name and I'm sorry if I mispronounce it. But of course those books, I, her confidence of wildflowers have taken over my soul and that's okay because I absolutely love that book but her and then Sophie Lark. Sophie Lark was new to me this year and I love them both. They both write romances. They both write different kinds of romances, but the kinds that they do write, they're fantastic at. So if you haven't had a chance to read any of theirs, I would definitely give them a chance. The next one, this is, I'm laughing because I have like 5,000 answers to this. The next one is my newest favorite fictional crush there's so many there's so many because i get so emotionally attached to my men oh lord to the men i read <laughs> like not even the women just the men i mean there i have read about some strong women but the men tug at my heartstrings so let's see if i can remember them all cow from brutal prince I love him because like if you touch her you die type vibes it garrett graham from the deal absolutely adore him he's a sweetheart love him so much james slash hook from hooked by emily mcintyre <gasps> oh my god she's another new to me author that i absolutely love i read hooked and i am hooked she is another author but hook from that book look he's legit like he will literally kill you i mean cal will too but like he will use his hook and kill you. That man, yes, that man right there. So those are three. I am sure I had another one, but I cannot think of it right now because my mind is going blank. 
do you get that like when you read a book and then you completely forget what you read yeah it's not a very good habit to have if you're a booktuber but it tends to happen very often for me okay my newest favorite character okay so I just finished a book by Piper Rain. Well, actually, they're two authors, Piper and Rain, but together. And it is called Lessons from a One Night Stand. And it's a small town romance. And I haven't had a chance to talk about it yet, but I will in my wrap up. But there is a character in that book named Grandma Dory. And it's the hero's grandma. And she's a spitfire and I absolutely love her. She speaks her mind. She tells you when you're acting like a freaking idiot. And she is my new favorite character uh from the books that i read and actually she's in like there's nine books and she's like in all of them and she's supposed to get like more funny as it goes on so i'm definitely excited to like continue that series and to see what grandma dory gets herself into the next is a book that made me cry and I, uh there's only one i'm pretty sure there's only been one book this year that's made me cry and that is the book thief by marcus suzak i loved i loved this book and i don't read historicals and i probably won't read any more the rest of the year but this one talked at the heartstrings then i watched the movie it made me cry also but yeah that one definitely made me cry it's based in world war ii in germany and it really is a if you haven't read it and you do like historicals i would advise you to read it even if you don't like historicals like give it a chance it was just, it was really good books that made me happy books that made me happy this past year the simple wild <gasps> that's my other boyfriend that's the other fictional boyfriend i couldn't think of jonah from the simple wild thank you for remembering but yeah uh <laughs> jonah from the simple wild any day any day any day mm -hmm. but yeah so that book made me happy it also made me sad if you know you know but the overall story made me happy uh lessons from a one night stand by piper rain which was the one i just talked about by with grandma dory that book made me happy and resurrection of a wildflower <laughs> made me happy too if i could answer all these with one of the wildflower books i would do we see the pattern here the next one is most beautiful book i've either bought or received this year and i don't know i've been trying to think and i don't know so whenever i do think of it i'm going to put a picture of it here but i don't know because one have we seen the book hauls that i've done this year already do we see the book haul i still need to do i I accumulate so many books that I really can't remember what all I've been given or I bought myself so like the covers are just kind of escaping me but I'll go through them and I will figure it out and then I'll put it here for you guys and the last question is <laughs> what books do you still need to read by the end of the year ma'am all of them that's my answer from last year too because don't make me do not make me decide. I cannot point it down. Can't do it. There's so many. I, I have over 600 books and I may have read like 10% of them. It's bad. So a lot of books. Yeah, I have a lot that I need to read. I have a lot that I want to read. Like I, I want to get into the Twisted Game series by Anna Juan. I want to get into more small, small town romances. I want to finish the Brutal Birthright series and then go on to the Canesmaker series. I want to read some more Penelope Douglas. I want to read some more indie romance. Girl, boy, whoever, I have a lot. I'm not answering that even though I just did. But yeah, that is all my answers to the mid-year freak out book tag whatever you all know it's in the title but i hope you guys enjoyed this leave your answers down below to some of these i would love to know what you guys have read up until this point of the year if you enjoyed this video be sure to give it a thumbs up and consider subscribing if you're new and would love to join the family i would love to have you here all my social media is linked down below like always and i will see you all in the next one bye guys but this is just a little roundup of the books that I've read Thank you FedEx Why is the truck so loud? Thanks so much. Thanks so much. Okay.